We use stereograms to study top-down feedback. A random dot stereogram for a central disk in front of a surrounding ring is made like this. First, make a random dot image for the left eye, then copy to the right eye, then shift the central disk relative to each other. This relative shift is called binocular disparity. V1 neurons are tuned to such a disparity so that, for example, this neuron responds more to its preferred disparity at around 0.1 degree of visual angle. Here is another stereogram, same as the one above, except that for the central disk, a black dot for one eye corresponds to a white dot for the other eye and vice versa. Such a stereogram is called anticorrelated or contrast reversed. V1 neurons respond to such stereograms as if their preferred disparities become anti-preferred and vice versa. This is as if V1 reports that the central disk is behind the ring. Humans cannot see such reverse depth signals. They cannot tell whether the disk is in front or behind in central vision. This is because the top-down feedback comes back to check and verify V1's reports and then find things are not quite expected, therefore veto this report, therefore we don't see the reverse depths. This study investigates the feedback. We use such schematics to depict normal stereograms versus contrast reverse stereograms. A binocularly corresponding pair of dots are depicted by an arrow pointing from the right eye dot to the left eye dot, and they are called homopairs or hetero pairs. We now make new stereograms from these two. Start with only homo pairs. Make two more copies of the stereogram. Add some hetero pair here. The depth signal from these hetero pairs is reversed from the depth signal from these homo pairs. So this is an incongruent random dot stereogram. Add some hetero pairs here. But turn the disparity around, so now the V1 signal from the hetero pairs and the V1 signal from the homo pairs agree with each other. So this is a congruent random dot stereogram. If you just add noise, this is just a neutral random dot stereogram. And uh, although this uh, depth is invisible from these hetero pairs, we can ask if you add hetero pairs to homo pairs whether they will make the depth perception clearer or less clear depending on whether the hetero pairs are congruent or incongruent. We can ask the subject to report to us whether these three types of stereograms give us the same kind of depth perception, whether they look equally clear or whether this one look even clearer in depth and that one look less clear in depth. We can even make the effect more obvious by adding a bit more noise. Concretely, if ask people to compare a neutral stereogram and incongruent stereogram and see if they prefer to say that the neutral one looks clearer and comparing a congruent one with a neutral one or a congruent one with an incongruent one and if they indeed prefer the neutral one here, congruent one here and congruent one there then all these preferences should be above zero. When we give them a viewing duration of 0.02 second indeed they prefer the neutral one here, congruent one here and congruent one here. With a longer viewing duration of 0.1 second, all these effects are still significant, whether it's enhancement or degradation, although this double effect is relatively weaker compared to the one above. With an even longer viewing duration of 0.2 second, this degradation effect disappeared. This may be why this double effect, which is the summation of these two effects, is weaker here than the one above when this degradation is present. These observations still hold for an even longer viewing duration of one second. So it seems like when the viewing duration is too short for feedback to be available, reversed depth signals from V1 contribute to perception by enhancing or degrading perception. When the viewing duration is longer, feedback is available. It preserves the enhancement effect but vetoes the degradation effect. So there's a nonlinear constructiveness of the analysis by synthesis in a top-down feedback. It preserves the reverse depth signal when they are beneficial to perception, but vetoes it when they are detrimental. 
quite similar to the fill-in constructedness in the Kanitsa triangle, where imperfect sensory input is used constructively by our mental imagination. In experiment two, we measured the threshold or minimum amount of homo pairs of dots needed to perceive depths clearly, and found that this amount is more or less when there is incongruent or congruent reverse depth signals from V1. But this incongruent effect is only significant when stimulus conditions made feedback difficult to act. Although depths in such stereograms are typically invisible in central vision, they can enhance or degrade depths in these normal stereograms when these hetero pairs are mixed with homo pairs. And when you have top-down feedback, the enhancement is preserved, but the degradation is vetoed.